Anyway, we're going to do a review of Re-Life, done by Studio TMS Entertainment. This anime first aired on July 2nd, 2016, and is the story of a basically a neat whose name is Kaizaki. Right. He's a 27-year-old man trying to find work, bouncing mm-hmm. around from interview to interview, getting rejected, and... One night, he meets a man named Ryu Yoake, who is a member of a research company called ReLife, or D-Life. You don't have to say it like that every time. It's so much fun. (laughs) He offers Kaizaki an opportunity to change his life for the better by going back 10 years by taking a drug and re-entering high school. Yes. And he says that we will pay for all your living for the year, for one year, and after the year's over, if you are good or something, we will give you a job right so this is the show that i passed um a a season or two ago and yeah the first couple episodes you're introduced introduced to this guy who's a total loser you know he's 27 years old he can't hold down a job he got he got a job right out of grad school and quit within the first three months and so since then he's had difficulty nailing a job like he works at a convenience store part-time um just to get by and he lies to his friends. Like uh, in the first episode, one of his friends calls him and is like, hey, let's go out for beers. And he's like, yeah, sure thing. I'm just getting off work. So he like puts on a suit and like goes and, and it's meets so with sad. Them. He's yeah, like faking it. He's pretending to have like an office job. And um, on the way home, his mother calls him and asks him how the interview went because he had an interview. He says it didn't go well. And she tells him, well, uh, I've got some bad news. We're cutting you off. And as I, you should. As, yeah, you're 27 years old, and apparently his parents are paying his rent and all that stuff. Did you know that 29 is the age in which the average millennial moves out of their parents' house in the U.S.? Really? Isn't that crazy? That is nuts. I can't even fathom that. Yeah. 29, I was living by myself in a foreign country. <laughs> That's true. I mean, crazy. I, I moved out pretty late. I think I was like 22. That is not late. Dude, yeah. that's like what the age that... People normally move in out of their parents' houses. Yeah. That's the age you would graduate from college and be on your own. I guess that's, that's true. a normal so that's good. Yeah. So but, that's um, that's what you're experiencing here. Like the parents are finally like, get the hell out of here. Right. <laughs> you're but, on your own, bitch. Exactly. So now he's kind of feeling miserable because he feels incapable of getting a job and is now having to figure this all out for himself for the first time. And that's when he's introduced to the guy that works at the Real Life Institute, and uh, he gives him this pill, as you said, that will make him appear as if he's 10 years younger, so appear as if he's 17. He'll still have the mind and internal workings of a 27-year-old, but his appearance will be that of a 17-year-old, which is hilarious because I still can't tell the difference between him pre- and post-age jump. No, he looks the same. He looks exactly but he the same. Tells, but he can tell the difference. Right. Because he, he wakes up the next morning and he's like, oh no, what happened? What, did I take the pill? Because he was drunk and he forgot. Yeah, but he I'm, was drunk. Yeah, but I'm looking at him, I'm like, you look exactly the same. I don't see the difference. Which is like, you're on a limited budget, you have no job, should you really be binge drinking out in public? True. That's a good point. I mean, if you're going to get hammered just because you're sad, go drink at home where it's cheap. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good point. So, so he goes back into high school, uh, senior year, and gets to relive the whole thing all over again. And it's, it's an interesting enough concept in that, uh, I mean, I'll tell you right now, as someone who is in his late 20s, I've often thought about, man, what would it be like if I went back 10 years and got to do it all over again? What differences would I, what different choices would I make? You know, that kind of thing. And God, was, I'd change a lot. Right? Or would you, though? See, here's the thing. And yes, this is I would. Of, uh, okay. Um, all right. But it, well, and, and this is something to consider, though, because it's like if you change a lot about that, the show is a little different because it's he's not going back in time. You know, he's just, he still, once the year is over, is going to have to go right back to being his same age and nothing is going to be any different as far as like his past. So... But, you know, you think about what it would be like. Would you make the same mistakes um, because you're still you, uh, even though you may know a little better now? So it's it's an interesting concept. Um, it doesn't it does some things well, like you you can definitely tell that he's an older 
person when he's talking to these kids at school and he's like giving them advice and stuff. And, and it's, it's a lot of advice that when you're that age, you don't want to hear, or you're not prepared to hear. So you'll notice like he'll be talking to some, some of the girls, uh, like there's a scene where he's talking to one and she's like having this, you know, she's a teenager and she's going through these emotions and stuff that she doesn't quite understand. And so he's trying to explain to her how, you know, what is and is not important and what she should be concerned about, and what she should not be. And, but she's emotional and she can't really take that advice. So it's interesting to see that dichotomy there between what a few years does for your maturity. Doesn't she get pissed at him also? Like, oh, how sure. dare you lecture me? You're the same age. Right, right. And I'm just like, nope. But it's interesting <laughs> though, because like you think back 10 years ago, I was an idiot 10 years ago. Oh, come on. But like, in comparison to like who I am today, I think back of like of my maturity and what I considered to be important and what was not important to me and the the choices I made at that age were dumb compared to who I am now. But then you also consider 10 years from now, am I going to look back and be like, wow, that me was an idiot as well. I'm going to be the, I, I was the exact same 10 years ago. I imagine you were the exact same when you were born. It's like, <laughs> I st- I still thought video games and anime were the most important thing. True. And I still think that. And you still hated everything. <laughs> Except that it didn't work out as much 10 years ago. True. But I don't know. It's an interesting concept, but they don't quite take it there because, again, he's not affecting his youth. Like, he's not going back in time and changing anything. He just has to live with these kids for this period of time and pretend to be one of them. Um, one of the other things I found interesting was that they mention after his year is up, no one will remember him. So he'll right. still have these experiences, but everyone that he, he came into contact with, he'll basically be a black. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Like he'll be like a foggy memory of like, I remember somebody said something, but I don't remember who it was. It's very convenient that a drug he takes affects other people. I get, yeah, that's a little weird. You had to just assume that none of that makes any sense. Right. But what's interesting about that to me is that he's in this year, he's forming these bonds and these relationships with these people. Like he's, befriending people and he's even having kind of odd romantic interests with these girls which is a little weird but you know um and and to think like all of these meaningful relationships he's creating are are not gonna matter like they don't mean anything because in a year no one's gonna remember him so um and they they touch on this a bit in the show about the importance of even though ultimately it doesn't matter because you're going to move on and you may not have these same people in your life 10 years from now or, you know, anything like that. It It's living in the moment that's important. And even though those relationships and those bonds and those experience may not matter in the long run, they matter now. And that's equally as important. So that's something that they touch on that I thought was interesting. Um, but that's about the the limit of the depth of this show. The rest of it is kind of just your standard slice of life. And I think that's what you felt by watching it. If you want to go into I'll tell you, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something, kid. Before we started this podcast, I texted Kazuo and Kimiko and I said to them, here's the quote I said. Oh boy. I said, can I re spend (laughs) The 10 hours it took me to get through re-life. And uh, what did I think You said some other stuff in there. Kimiko, or Kimiko said, I liked it. I didn't, I watched the second season. And I said, I'm going to murder this show today. Bring your boxing gloves. Bring your boxing gloves. And she's not here. And she's not here to she's box with me, not here which to is so herself. sad. Um, but let me start with the good things about this anime. Okay. Some characters did experience growth throughout the show. Right. Oh, definitely. I that is the good thing about the anime. Like, Reyna, who is a whiny pain in the ass, the redheaded girl. Oh, my God. What? She I, how does of, she have friends? I don't know. I don't know I, why they I, like her so much. I was she trying to sucks. figure that out because she's literally, her entire character is she's just a pain in the ass who is upset at everything and hates everyone. She has so many character flaws. And it's like... Normally, in a normal human relationship, even though people may have flaws, there are reasons why you befriend them. 
they're you know you get along on certain levels but with her there's no reason that they explore in the show that would lead you to believe that people would like her i think she is kind of a um like an avatar for the viewer to be like even though i'm a complete asshole and and i'm a pain in the butt to deal with i'm still going to have people that like me and so they want that to be true but it's not true if you're an, if you're an asshole nobody's going to like you right and she's insanely jealous and even like willing to commit small crimes against the other characters sure and it's really she's but she does have some growth throughout the show mostly because the other characters are unre and are, are unrealistically willing to level with her yeah throughout the course of the show um the main girl whose name is Oh, the dark-haired girl? Um, Chizuru. Chizuru has... Yeah, the dark-haired girl. She who has all, some growth. She has also probably... A, she's on the on the spectrum. She's got, like, some kind of Asperger's for Definitely. sure. Definitely. Kaizaki, the main character, does he grow? I'm not really sure, to be I honest. I think so. Yeah, no, he definitely does. Um, uh, they talk about, like, at the beginning... Um, and, and this is kind of like gone over in a later episode, but they talk about how his um, lack of an ability to make decisions and make meaningful relationships and that kind of thing. And so in a way he does grow through the show because he is able to make these meaningful relationships and to affect uh, the lives of other people around him. So he becomes like a part of society as opposed to before when he's just a neat who wants to sit in his room and drink beer. Well, technically they, they gave him the gift of not being a neat because you cannot be in school and be a neat. That takes you out of the definition of a neat. The one of the E's stands for education. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. So but they kind of like, cheated that You can that one. certainly maintain that personality in school. Like you can be that guy who sits by himself during lunch and doesn't talk to anybody. Like that's 100% possible. But he broke out of that and made a distinct effort to befriend people. So in a, in a sense, he did grow. So there was there was some growth there, but that's about where the good things ended for me on the show. Mm. I really didn't like the show. You didn't like the music? Let me start with the music. So <laughs> so the music in the show is you, some of the worst I have ever... You did text... I me. have ever heard in an anime before. You did say, quote, they should redo the music in real life because it is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is really bad. It's it's so horrible. Bad. It's so bad. So like, bad like, that I dragged my keyboard into the podcast studio last night. Did you? <laughs> and tried to recreate one of their songs without it's without any musical score. It sounds without any practice. I just basically farted on the keys and made made the same noises that they made in the show. It's I, Oh, sorry. I'm going to play two clips for you. Okay. And I want you to try to tell me oh. which is the real the real clip from real life. It may be obvious because of how they sat because of how the sound quality is. Right. But tell me which one you think is the real clip. Okay. okay? Here here's the first one. It's the same clip. That that, that was one clip. Oh, okay. Okay. You want to hear it again? Yeah, yeah. Or do you want to hear one more time? No, wait, those were two separate clips? That was the same clip. There's okay. two pieces, da -da 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 -da, and then the second. Da -da -da -da. Okay, okay. So okay. let's hear the second one. All right, here's the second one. Well, that's the show, right? That second one? Yeah. No, that was me. What? <laughs> yeah, hammering on the keyboard. Okay. I'm saying my point is that <laughs> the music is so horrible that yeah. I literally took my keyboard in here last night at midnight Dropped it on the podcast table, slammed my hands onto the keys, and you just guessed incorrectly. So that's how bad the music is. It sounded like watching the show. It sounded as if they had a middle schooler just sitting there watching the show and occasionally slamming on the keyboard as it went along. Here is some actual music from the show. Like not, I called that other one menacing. Mm -hmm. I'll play it again just so you can hear how, how bad it is. This is like the menacing music. When something supposedly bad is happening. Okay. This is the music that when something just ha is happening in general. I want to become your girlfriend. Ari. What? I love you, Arata-kun. 
same shit, same, same, same two seconds yeah. of music over and over and over again. This is rough. <laughs> anyway, so. Alright, well, look, it's not music a music show. The music is horrendous. Show. It's literally the, the OST would. And, and the ending themes are all old songs from other anime or from, or from older pop stars. Oh, boy. Like, you recognize some of the old songs, and they weren't even made uniquely for this anime. The music was bad. The animation, also horrendous. Horrendous is a strong... Horrendous. The backgrounds, like, there'd be, a, there'd be an entire cafeteria full of people eating, yeah. and they would literally have one character lip-flapping while mm. nothing else on the screen moved at all. None of the other people moved, even, even, in, even in an inkling of a, of a movement at all. And then <laughs> that person would stop talking, well, and then the other person would move. Sometimes their mouth would not be moving when they talked like the mouth flaps were not great on the show the in char- Japanese the backgrounds lacked detail like you'd have people in the background and rather than drawing a face they would do the Dragon Ball Super where they did like two dots yeah. for the eyes uh, I mean it was it, was, it looked and sounded uh, terrible I mean just it just did okay there's no getting around I'll it. give you I that mean, um should I just continue tearing it apart or are you gonna boxing gloves you're gonna play the Kimiko and fight me I didn't like it as much as Kimiko did. <laughs> it's much more fun if you come right. at me, bro. Well, I mean, I can't argue with the fact that it looked and sounded terrible. That's not that, that's that's just a fact it did. I mean, but I think the overall the like the the the, the emotions that you feel while watching this show, I think were pretty strong. Like I felt connected to the characters. I really enjoyed them except for the redhead Reina, who is just a total pain in the butt. But everybody else I was like, man, I really like being around these people. And I think that's that's a key element in a slice of life show is that because slice of life shows aren't necessarily about uh, a certain theme. It's just you're you're experiencing a piece of this person's daily activities for a period of time. But what's so vitally important about that is that you enjoy and appreciate and can connect with the characters. And so I felt like the characters overall in this show were pretty strong like they were enjoyable at no point in the show was i like oh i gotta get through another episode and that happens a lot especially with some of the shows we review but yeah throughout the show i was like oh this is fun i get to hang out with these people ichigo fields from the chat says all their budget went to the theme songs that would have been true except more like they went the budget if so went to paying the royalties because all of the theme songs were old songs right so um Okay, so yeah, keep keeping going on my on my tirade. I appreciated the the counter right there. Mm-hmm. Is that the, mostly plot comments here? The plot, the pacing, very slow, and the story felt unbelievably uneventful. I mean, this is this this was the progression of the story once he hit school. Mm-hmm. And I, and I'll tell you right now that one night last week I was having trouble sleeping. So I went out into the living room. If you down. say you fell asleep watching the show, I, you fall asleep watching let me, anything. Let me tell you, I fe- I lay down on the couch and put on Relife because I assumed, because I always do, I would fall asleep within an episode. Right. But I didn't because the first two episodes of Real Life are pretty good. So mm-hmm. I understand why you passed the show. Right. Which I was very upset by the fact that I didn't fall asleep at that time, by the way. <laughs> but the show goes from... Two maybe two episodes of talking about him taking makeup tests. Yeah. Two episodes of Raina's drama about not being as athletic or smart as the other girls and them and them not caring. (laughs) To another arc later, also about Raina, where she's pissed because she got injured and can't play volleyball. That was probably six out of the twelve episodes, thirteen episodes of this anime. I feel like the show was about Raina. Like overall. Like she I felt like she got more time and like story than the main character did, which I will agree sucks because like Rain is super annoying and yeah, I don't know why they spent so much time on her, but they did. But the best thing about the show was was Anne, dude, who was the other worker Anne. because dude, when, when she <laughs> took her hair out of the braids, right? I was like in love. Oh yeah, she and then I she's mean, like, oh my god, my mind exploded. Well, should we? I don't want to spoil things, but. I'm just going to play the spoiler drop. All right, yeah, we're going to spoil some stuff. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. Because they're coming. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right, so let's see how many many people leave now that I play the spoiler drop. So to start, we'll start off with some, like, mild spoilers. Like, for instance, Anne was one of the characters who you find out 
is um, one of the, what do they call it, support staff. So she actually works for V Life and is an adult that is uh, appearing to be a ch- a, one of the kids. And at a, and at a so hot. Yeah. And at a point, she like starts coming on to the main character heavily. Oh. Like she's crawling towards him and stuff. And like, she was the one talking in that music clip that I played. Yeah. And so I was like, go do it. Go for it. Oh, dude. I was all about it. But the show will not allow it to happen. No. Because the entire time that things like that happen, he's thinking, oh, I'm really older. I can't do these things. Which, yes, you can. Is he older? Because. <laughs> the point was to, for him to go back so that he could experience being younger. Yeah. So if you're still going to act like you're older, are you really playing by the rules of it? True. And when they did have, it felt like there was some contradiction there with even like the support staff. Cause like they were saying at one point, you know, this is the only chance you're going to have to go through this, you know, live it up, you know, specifically when referring to his relationships with girls but then at other times, it felt like they were like, you better not do anything. It's like, well, what do you want? Should he do something or should he not do something? Or should he only do certain things? Or like, how far is he able to go? But with Anne, she was just messing with him in that instance. But um, later on, though, there was certainly, and this is a little bit more of a heavy spoiler, like his connection with, um, what's her name? The dark haired girl. Oh, do you want to go to that spoiler? Because I don't think we really need to. No. You're going right to the end, the last moments. No, of No, not show? quite. I mean, we can. Get I don't really there. think it's necessary. Um, it was kind of. I mean, it, it was barely. It, they never did anything with it. They never mentioned it again. It felt really out of place, and it actually doesn't make sense for the story. Maybe we'll we'll get there. Right? Okay. Maybe later we'll get there. But but you do see his his bond with us with this girl growing throughout en- the show. Enough of her. More about Anne. But Anne is not. A major part of the story. But she's so hot. Doesn't matter. She's pro- she's she's maybe as anime fans will say, best girl in the um, season. You know, I really like the main dark haired girl. She's like maybe one tenth as attractive. No way, dude. When she has that kimono on and her well, hair. Well, you up, never got to see the other girl in a kimono. Like, oh snap! You never got to see Anne in a kimono. That's true. Did you? I, no. It was Anne, and then the and the red the red haired girl. But, but anyway, so yeah, so the anime not, felt very slow. It felt very uneventful to me. I mean, this is a, this is a four hour. Sh- I should be able to watch this in four hours. Yeah, it took me almost. I think it took closer to twelve hours for me to watch this. Well, that I kept pausing it. I'm like, oh god, bored. Pause. Do something. Else. I didn't do that at all. Well, I just watched right through it. What were the events in the show that had you like so gripped into it that you just kept watching it, or were, or were you just in the zone, like focused on it, it was. Uh, I felt like it was a very light watch, like an easy. Like I, I wasn't like intensely focused on what's going to happen next. It was just like, oh, this is nice to have playing. Like it's not one of those shows that you want to dissect, uh, even though we are. <laughs> but it's it's just one of those like casual shows that you can tune in and out of and get through. And that's kind of like what I did. Like I certainly was paying attention to what was going on, but. Um, at, at no point was I, like, uh, having trouble. Like, it was just a very easy watch. I literally just threw on um, whatever on, I think it was Crunchyroll or something, and just let it auto-play through all the episodes. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, the problem to me is that throughout the course of this anime, I feel like they don't address the initial problems that they set up as the premise for the show. How so? And to me, the show, as you describe it also, is just like a normal slice of life anime. Yeah. The show backs itself into a corner big time in the middle of the sh- in About episode 10 or 11, this is a huge spoiler, they go into Kaizaki's backstory, which is probably the best part of the show to me. Oh, yeah. That shows... Okay, well, I guess we are getting into, like, major spoilers. Well, I have to say this to talk right. about my point. He joins a black kigyo out of school. Yes, a I black, looked that up because I didn't black, know what it was. A black kigyo being a black corporation, which is like they'll work you really hard, huge overtime hours, very um, little, pay. maybe bad working conditions, low pay. Mm-hmm. They're basically a company that is abusive, doesn't give a shit about quality of life, will drive you into the ground. He's in one of these companies, right? And his senpai or whatever in the company kills herself. Yes, because the guys at the company were doing messed up things to her, like 
you know, uh, d- deleting reports or whatever and stuff and getting her in trouble. And he found out about it and was like talking to his senpai, talking to her and saying, you know, I'm going to do something about it. She's like, no, don't do anything about it. Let it go. And I guess he did something about it and it got worse. And then she ended up killing herself. So he quits. The sum of the sum of that is that he quits after yeah. three months. That's that job that we mentioned before. That he quits after three months. And in very accurate terms of Japanese society, he gets blacklisted by Japanese society because you are you really shouldn't be a person that jumps from job to job in Japan, especially after only three months, because it makes you look disloyal and the next company will say, well, why would I bother hiring you? You're just going to quit us too. Mm-hmm. I know a girl in Japan who is an accountant, mm. makes probably pretty good money, but she hates it. Right. But she says, I can't quit because... Like, no one will want to hire her if she quits. So, that is a societal issue that they're they're touching on in this anime. The anime, whether they meant to or not, actually touches on a problem in Japan of working conditions and what it's like to try to be hired for a job. Right. But there is no evidence throughout the course of this anime that Kaizaki has has overcome this problem at all. Because even throughout the course of the show, after one year, he has done literally nothing that would make another Japanese employer take a chance on him because he still has that, that I quit after three months black mark on his resume. Furthermore, they never actually offer him a job at the end of Relife. Uh, so you're just supposed to assume everything's fine. It's to be expected. Like, uh, in large, like, they... Ma- Is it? Yeah. Because they they don't talk about it. They made it pretty clear that his real life experience was successful. They even did a flashback earlier in the show where they rejected another dude from entering real life. So for all I know, it's competitive. It wasn't a dude that they rejected. Whatever. A person. It was. You know who it was. Probably not. I was probably doing podcast prep. I know right. they rejected Well, since somebody. we're already deep into spoilers, it was the dark haired girl. She was... She was... Um, uh, subject 001, the girl that he was romantically linked to. Well, he, why would she still be in the real life program? That's what didn't make sense. That's what upset me was because, so I thought it was just another person that, no. that failed. There and were only, UK had baggage because of it. There were only two people that had been through the real life program for this particular division that, um, that we that were introduced to. There's obviously real life programs for other divisions, but there were only two, uh, Kazuki, was that his name? Was Kaizaki. Kaizaki was uh, subject 002. Prior to him, there was subject 001, which was Chizuru, which was the dark-haired girl that he kind of falls for, and she falls for him. So what's so and and, and they they talk about that. Like they in they kind of like brush by it though, which is weird in like the last couple episodes. Like they say like you get the idea like, oh, she's also going through the real life program. Um, and they talk about like who her uh, support person is and stuff like that. But she's subject 001, which is super weird because it's supposed to be a one year program. And she knows the support guy from the year before. So she went through it twice. I'm not going to try to I'm not going to try to rationalize. It doesn't that. make sense. That, if some, as if, far as I'm concerned, you just pointed at another negative mark on the. That, no. And that's what I'm that's that's my biggest problem with the show or one of them was that that didn't make any sense. She went through the program last year. Why is she going through it again? I I don't know. I don't know. Never enough Xbox, by the way, thank you for watching live. I don't think I've seen him before or her, but welcome to the chat says, well, the manga continues his story. Yeah. It seems like there's going to be another season. And here's, and here's my answer to that. You don't care if there is another season. Or if rather, if there is not another season, I'm not in the business of watching anime whose sole existence and purpose is to be advertisements for mangas. Mm -hmm. We all know that happens a lot. That's what this seems like, yeah. If that's what this is, then I'll just fail it right now because I'm not in the business of watching advertising. You can't fail it. Whatever, I give it a one because I'm not in the business of <laughs> watching. A, a, I'm, not, a I'm not in the business score. of watching an anime that's that I, that that was presented to me so that I could be advertised to watch to read mangas that can't sell themselves. That makes me that makes me very angry. Well, that's an assumption that it you're is. making. I said if there's not a second season, <laughs> right? But it would if there seem is that second, there's going to be. If there is a second season, which they made no bones, they made no evidence of the fact that there would be, and I don't know what they would do with it, honestly. What he finishes mm-hmm. the year and then just starts starts working, working at that real life. Really boring. Huh? Um, unless maybe he becomes an instructor. Uh, 
If that's the case, then maybe we can review the second season. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I just, I don't, based on what I watched in the show, I have no reason to believe that he's solved his issues at all. I mean, he did. He got the job. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Where in the where in the anime did they say you had? They didn't expressly say like you've got, but they made it very apparent that he had been successful in his real life program, like very successful, and that was the whole point. If he succeeds there, he's got the job. So I'm pretty sure he's got the job. Well, I didn't see that. So, also the ending. What the hell was that? It was definitely. uh, It didn't end strong. Yeah, like. It, it, it makes you assume a lot at the ending, for sure. Like, um, I will say, they didn't definitively say that he got the job, to your defense, but it, you have to assume that he did, judging based on, you know, how the show went. Um, also, you have to assume that he's going to pursue some kind of romantic relationship with Ch- Chizuro. I want to know why he didn't do it then and there. I mean, they made him know. younger so he could experience life as a young person again. Right. He should be treating himself like a young person, not living with reservations about the fact that he's older. Yeah. Or or they made a really stupid drug that let him still have appre I mean, if anything in Japan, being younger would make him being having a younger mind would make him not want to have sex because young people aren't having sex in Japan. You got to be like 40 before that happens. So he'd be more likely to have sex with the adult brain. <laughs> That's a joke about the birth rate. Right. So astrophysics in the chat is saying he didn't get the job, but I want to know if that's just his opinion or does he know that for a fact? I don't even know what his issues are. He's trying to find work. His, yeah. his, t- as far as I'm concerned, he's a normal guy who stood up for him f- for what he thought was right, a very mentally healthy, normal, reasonable thing to do, but be got, but it got blackballed by a, by a broken Japanese work society because he quit his job after three months. Right. That's, I don't know, even know what's wrong with him. What is, what is his, like, I get Raina's problem. Huge insecurity, jealousy, um, selfish. I get Chizuru's problem. She's got, like, problems socializing. But Kaizaki is, like, the most normal person in this anime, and I don't understand what it was. Exa- to the point where the old co-workers he meets idolize him. Yeah. And I'm like, he seems like a pretty good, normal person. If anything, this anime is a commentary on the shitty Japanese work system. <laughs> Which it might be, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it certainly touched on that. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, Astro's saying that he didn't get the job, but I don't think he knows that. I, but uh, Also, I don't know if he did or didn't get the job because you have to assume that just based on how the show went. So, who knows? It's, it's definitely very open-ended and that's not a strong... I mean, when you've got one season to tell a story, you can't leave us with... Maybe this happened. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? It's like, well, that's not an ending to a show. You got to conclude it. So I'm looking up to see if anything was said about it, about a season two of Real Life. Mm. And I see here that the manga had over 100 chapters or something. So there could be more, but no one seems to know. Yeah, I don't know. But just based on what we saw... I mean, it, it would seem that you hated it from what... From- I, it, it, here, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I heard the synopsis the, the very first time. I thought it sounded stupid. Mm-hmm. I think I said Oh, yeah, that. I remember. I got ripped by everybody on Earth, mm-hmm. living, non-human, automated Twitter well, machines. Because to, to be Kimiko fair... Kimiko ripped me. She had already seen all of it because it came out all at once. Yeah. Everyone ripped me because... Mm-hmm. I was being unfair. I hadn't seen the show yet. Right. That's fine. I get it. But to me, this show has like an 8.4 on my anime list. That's ridiculous. Everyone loves it somehow. And to me, it just felt like an average slice of life show that had characters in it with problems I didn't give a shit about. You just hated Hibike Euphonium because it was all about high school drama. Well, that's what this anime no. is. Hibike Euphonium is not about high school drama. Hibike Euphonium is about nothing. Hibike Euphonium is about, it's about <laughs> oh, I want to be the first string in the to play trumpet. Yeah. That's high school drama. This is a this is a girl going, I, I want to be the best person in the school and at volleyball. No, the it's show's the same, not about her. It's the same thing. <laughs> Reina is not the main character. She, she, she isn't? She shouldn't be. Because she feels like the main I know. character. <laughs> so to me, 
this is just a normal anime. Like, it sounds like I hate the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. If it was a social commentary on the Japanese work system, I would love it a lot more, but I just think it's a normal show. It's down there with, like, Tonadi no Kaibutsukun and all those, like, random slice-of-life comedy high school shows. Yeah, I... Yeah, I felt like it was super, like, average high school slice of life. It had some serious issues, specifically with the animation quality and the music quality. But as far as, like, the story is concerned, it felt very standard. Um, But it did have some interesting concepts that they touched on, but not enough. We're going pretty long, so I'm going to give it two and a half pills that turn me back into a real-sized old person out of five. (laughs) even though you look exactly the same. Um, yeah, I I feel like it's 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 an average so, show with a slight kick that puts it just above the average. Um, so for me, I'm going to give it three and a half sprained ankles out of five. Akimiko, even though she's not here, gave it a three and a half. So I guess that makes the show a three. 